Hi, this is my review of Ravenloft, Death on Chain. Death Unchained is the first part of a trilogy of adventures. Uh, these adventures are for the um, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons game, but they can be adapted to other editions. And well, it's a pretty old school adventure, but with a lot of, of scary moments. Nowadays you rarely find adventures uh, such as these that um, don't care about uh, conventions or or political correctness and just uh, try to be s as scary and, and macabre as possible. And well, let's talk about the quality of, of the book. This is a... Um, it's pretty old. So the quality of the paper is, is good, but mostly decent. And it has a few maps. Let me show you the maps here. You, you have a map for, um, for the city of Lekar. And for um, the Radiant Tower, and you also get a, a huge poster map for uh, the entire crypt complex under under the Radiant Tower. It's pretty neat stuff, and the the adventure is, is well written. It's very well organized. You can learn how to run it uh, really easily. However, I, I think there are some parts that are not as, as flexible as I would have wanted them to be. They think sometimes there is a bit of, of railroading, so it, you may have to, to think uh, and improvise in case your, your characters are trying some other type of solution. You're going to have to, to think on your feet quickly and... and, and mm, carry out whatever your characters are trying to, your players are trying to to attempt or, or solve. And well, the adventure uh, is, is a good introduction uh, to the Ravenloft campaign setting. Your characters may be in some other place, maybe they are in, um, in Greyhawk or, or in the Forgotten Realms, but there is a, a, a hook so you can uh, teleport your characters into this demiplane of dread. Now the, the main uh, part of the adventure is uh, carried out in the, in the realm of Vlad Dracov, who is obviously uh, like a reference or tribute to, to Vlad Tepes. And in the city of Lekar everything is, is pretty, I don't know, bleak. There is poverty and, and disease and there is uh, some sort of dictatorship. Look, at, uh, there are even some impaled people here, you know, like... Uh, during Black Tepes uh, reign. And uh, the characters start uh, getting into this really hostile place, this city where, where everybody's suffering and there is uh, like a secret police, uh, the Talons, that are hunting down anyone who, who looks uh, suspicious. The characters will probably have a few fights against the, the Talons in the, uh, as they navigate in the city, especially if they are elves because uh, they are pretty pre-racists in the, in the pre-racist in the city but eventually they will find an ally and this ally who is an elf will tell them that uh, they should join, join forces because there's something really weird going on and the characters will also find a, a mysterious corpse who um, seems to belong to some kind of cult and the, this new found ally will tell the characters to join forces to meet up at a chapel just outside the city and the characters will probably agree to that, but, and this is one of the best twists of the adventures, uh, the, the, uh, the adventure, the trilogy of adventures, because this is just a, a small part of a bigger plan. Uh, when the characters arrive at the chapel, they find that their new allies are all dead, they, somebody, somebody just got there and killed them all, and they will be ambushed. And the main villain of this adventure is a pretty interesting character, he's called uh, Ladilas Sinesti. And Ladis Lasinesti is a powerful necromancer. He may not look look like it, but he's uh, very very resourceful, very powerful. He is. The fun thing for the dungeon master is that this character has a lot of interesting spells and, and resources to to attack and annoy the characters at, at every turn. So every time their characters are, are walking by, a, let's say a graveyard or, or the chapel that I was telling you about, he's going to to hide somewhere and, and start racing in the undead or or maybe mm, 
I mean, through some spells, inhabiting the, the corpse of uh, somebody the characters just killed and suddenly this corpse rises and attacks them and the characters are going to be um, to feel really paranoid, they don't know when this necromancer is going to attack them they won't even know it's, it's a necromancer, they may think it's some kind of curse or something and this necromancer is actually the, the leader of the cult that the characters uh, and are going to find out is the cause of all the trouble in, in the city. This cult called uh, the Evenfold is a group of assassins that have these uh, sort of like crystal knives and when they uh, stab people with them they drain their life force and, and their blood and they are um, gathering this life force to for some darker purpose that will be revealed as the as the trilogy of adventures uh, progresses. And well, the characters will eventually uh, find, uh, will feel very desperate that they have no allies and they don't know where to turn to. But through uh, by finding uh, out clues such as uh, bloodstained notes and maps, they will uh, find that there is a lead at the Radiant Tower, where a wizard that is also a fortune teller uh, may become a temporary ally and give them a bit of information about what's going on but it's actually not, no real help at all however, below the Radiant Tower lies the, the hideout of the Evenfold uh, even the, this wizard, this fortune teller, uh, Mircea is unaware of the, uh, that the cult is, is hiding uh, just below his own tower it's a, a labyrinth of crypts the, this is uh, another interesting thing about this adventure that there is a lot of room for for a lot of uh, wilderness and, and urban encounters as the characters are trying to figure out things and, and trying to get to the radiant tower they may uh, bump into many all sorts of fun dead and, and all, all our different enemies maybe bandits or the talents in it themselves that are going to be hounding the characters throughout the city and when the characters get to the radiant tower they, they will eventually uh, find out that the hideout of the Avonfold is, is below the tower and this is one of the coolest dungeons I've seen in a Ravenloft adventure because it's the the labyrinth of crypts. It, it's kind of like a, like a vertical shaft or like a well, and the, there are many like compartments or there, there is like a like a niche in each part of the of the well, and some of them are empty, but uh, uh, some others have different uh, passageways and secret doors, so the characters uh, can navigate this entire labyrinth that is filled with so many dangerous things. For example, the, the vertical shaft itself has a giant spider web below and, and if one of the characters um, falls down because they're going, they're going to be to be climbing uh, the walls a lot, they're, they're, they will fall into uh, the spider web and a huge spider is going to attack them. And this spider uh, can be used by the dungeon master to add a lot of, of tension and paranoia to the adventure. Maybe the spider is just uh, lurking around the corner and the characters are just waiting for the spider to attack them, but the spider will will be uh, on hold until the characters are at their most vulnerable position and then it will attack them. And the encounters uh, inside the, the crypts are pretty, mm, I don't know, are pretty interesting uh, because they're not just, just rooms where you find this undead or this assassin attacking you. They, there are interesting locations, for example, you'll have an encounter in, in, in a crossing a bridge and there are other uh, encounters um, where the, the undead suddenly just rise and attack them uh, where they, when they least expect them because as I told you the necromancer is always uh, there lurking and there are also some, some creepy details for example uh, they, they will enter a room where there is like a little blood from somebody the assassins just killed and the blood is going to, to take form into different words and and letters uh, t telling messages to the characters as in avenge me or, or stuff like that and that's going to be really creepy and when the characters finally get to, to the necromancer or maybe they manage to face him in one of those occasions where the necromancer is, is harassing the characters this necromancer is deadly, he's very powerful I remember one time when I ran this adventure there, there were um, a party of six players and only one survived, uh, an anchorite who is like a, like a cleric of, of Ezra just because he made a, a saving throw against a death spell but all the other characters died uh, and he managed to kill a necromancer but that was pretty, I don't know, was pretty intense so this is a, a very deadly adventure, this is old school this is, there are going to be a lot of traps that may result in, in instant death and, and as he told you, this necromancer, wow, they just, it's really powerful and well 
what I think about this adventure, I think this is a great adventure. I really don't find any negative things about it. There's there are horrifying moments. Uh, there is this sense of dread and despair of of I don't know that the characters have no place to go or to turn for help. That they're they are on, on their own. And even if they finish the adventure, that's only going to leave them with more questions. Who is the real uh, mastermind behind the Diabon Fall? Because they're going to find out that the Necromancer is can, it's even uh, he's an underling, even though he's very powerful, he's just uh, the servant of some greater power. I think the only negative thing about this uh, this adventure is that, as I told you, there are some parts that seem a bit a bit like I don't know, like a bit strict, or that they are pretty much railroading the characters into following a, a specific path. And you may have to think in, uh, in advance um, how to be a bit more flexible if the characters attempt things out of the ordinary in, in, or out of the, the specific uh, path that the adventure is setting for them. So I, I highly re recommend that you get this. Um, you can get it, uh, of course, as a physical book, but um, I've seen it as a PDF at Drive Through RPG. And well, Thanks for watching my review, if you have any comments or questions, uh, please let me know, see you later.